Hey everyone! Before today's video begins, I'd like to let you know about a special group made-to-order offering happening with Carmina and Uncommon Man that ends on January 1st, 2022, so it's running until the end of December. I really want to highlight this group made-to-order because I think the three pairs of shoes that are being offered are absolutely amazing, and also because the event was designed by my friend Caleb Malinowski and the Uncommon Man team. Now, for those who don't know Caleb, he was a finalist in the World Shoe Shine Championship, so we're fellow shoe shiners, and he's just incredible at it. He's taught me a lot and offered me a lot of advice when I first started shining. The three pairs being offered are stunning, and I wanted everyone to know about what you can buy for this special limited run. My favorite among these is the Balmoral Oxford with a custom patina by Greg Park out of New York, who is one of my patina heroes. He's absolutely amazing at it. The Oxford is made on the rain last and comes with JR soles as well. The shoes are crafted in crust leather and are then sent to Greg for the patina before being delivered. I just really love the stunning color, which works well with any ensemble. But there's also the hippopotamus leather chuck -a boot if you don't want an Oxford and are looking to make a serious statement, one of the most unique pieces I've seen in a while. The Chukka is an adaptable and multifaceted boot, but it's just taken to another level completely with the hippopotamus leather and other small details like a hand-sewn apron and a storm split welt. Last but certainly not least are the butter soft peccary leather penny loafers on the sinew last. This contemporary loafer pays homage to the classic style, but adds some modern and welcome updates including JR soles and of course the supple peccary leather which is usually only found in high end glove making. You can buy any of the three you want or all three together for 10% off, and then once the GMTO event ends, the group order is sent to Carmina and the shoes are made. I think the offerings are truly staple pieces for veteran sartorialists and especially for those who are starting off and are looking for a good base on their collection. You can see all three offerings and purchase them at shopuncommonman.com and by visiting the link in the description of this video. Hey everybody, welcome back. Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays here from the Elegant Oxford. In today's video, I'm going to discuss and talk about probably my most common question that I get here on the channel. Invariably, I get it on every video that I make. And the question is, why do I only mirror shine the toe caps of shoes and not the entire shoe? Well, there's actually a really good reason, but I think that the question uh, stems from a misconception that just because the toe caps look really amazing that the entire shoe would benefit from a mirror shine. There's actually a really good reason why I don't. And uh, other others who ask this question are usually former military who mirror shined in the military. And in the military, you know, traditionally they would just mirror shine the entire boot and they would not care about the issue I'm going to discuss today. But um, I, I really do think there's a good reason why you shouldn't. I don't. And I'm going to discuss that in today's video. So stay tuned. I'm actually going to mirror shine a shoe completely, and I'm going to show you exactly why I don't do it. So let's get started. Now, I do like to mirror shine toes, but that's not the only place you can mirror shine. While I don't recommend mirror shining the entire shoe, there are other areas that you can actually shine really, really nicely. Side areas down here by the bottom, those can be mirror shined quite nicely. Of course, not like the toe, but you can still add a really high shine and that shouldn't be a problem. You're not going to get cracking. Another place that's less common is the heel of the shoe right here. This area is also stiff. It's not meant to flex, so you can mirror shine that area as well without issues. If you decide to mirror shine over the vamp, you're going to get some cracking and it looks really unsightly and ugly, so I don't recommend it. That's actually the reason why, but you don't have to leave this area bare. You can actually add two, three layers of wax and then brush it really nicely. Or you can even use a little bit of water and a rag and give it a high buff, but don't mirror shine it. Anything more than three or four layers, you're gonna to start to see some really nasty cracking. Now here's something I've observed over the many hundreds of pairs I've mirror shined. The longer the toe cap, the better the mirror shine. If a toe cap's pretty short, it's harder to mirror shine. The longer it is, the better it looks. I don't know why, that's just the way it is. But uh, you kind of want to avoid this top area if, if it's gonna it's gonna be flexing. And that happens on some feet, it doesn't happen on others. Some people get a perfect, a perfect crease right here. Others get it here diagonally. There's a bunch of ways to remedy it. Some people like setting their crease with a pencil. It, it just really depends on what you like. Make sure not to mirror shine over areas with flex points. 
or you're gonna get some cracking. And in the military, from what I've seen, they would just mirror shine the entire boot or shoe. And even if it cracked, it didn't matter. The next day they would just keep on shining. So that's just not something I recommend on a high-end shoe. You could do it on, on a pair of military boots. Uh, they're not really high-end, but not on a nice pair of shoes. I really don't recommend it. Here's the Wenatchee by Justin Fitzpatrick from the JF line. This is actually a shoe I wear all the time. It, it's become one of my favorites. I really like the, the, the shape of the shoe and the color. But here are my flex points. There's one here, one here, and then one slightly over here. It's not too visible though. So I kind of keep the mirror shine to this area and try to avoid this area. So uh, this is actually a shoe I wore a couple of days ago. So it does need to you know, get a little bit of a shine and some maintenance, but I'm actually gonna, for the sake of the argument, I'm gonna mirror shine the entire shoe. Then I'm gonna wear it and show you what that looks like just in case you've been wondering and you wanna keep asking me why I don't mirror shine shoes. I'm gonna show you exactly why I don't mirror shine the entire shoe. Let's open this. I just opened it today. It's nice and fresh. Always my favorite. So let me just add a few wax layers before I start. Just add some on the toe cap. And then we're just gonna go nuts with the mirror shine. I'm just gonna mirror shine the entire shoe. And I'll show you what happens. Now I'm gonna give it a good attempt. I'm actually gonna <laughs> add a lot of layers. And uh, we can see why I don't personally like mirror shining the entire shoe or over flex points. Just doesn't look nice. And then I'm going to teach you what to do if you do get some cracking. Because it's actually a really easy fix. I've discussed it a bunch of times. But it's just not information that's really out there. And most people don't watch all my videos. Which means you should if you haven't. There's a lot of, a lot of treasures that I hide in those random videos. A lot of really good advice. All right, so let me start mirror shining and then we'll get to it. All right. So I'm just adding those layers. You could probably go this far and add two or three layers. It's just gonna look really shiny, but it, it shouldn't crack. But uh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do one of these on the toe all over the vamp. So this might actually take a while, so I'm not gonna record it all, but I am gonna be adding Let's see, drops of water and wax. And I'll just do this for as long as it takes all over the place till we get a really mirror shine shoe everywhere. And then I'm gonna walk in it. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a couple steps and show you what happens. And then we'll talk about remedies for this. All right, we're, we're off. All right, so I did my best here to mirror shine this whole area over the flex points. It looks really awesome, I'm not gonna lie. It looks really fantastic and shiny. Now, to clarify, you can do a high shine over this area normally. That's gonna be completely fine, but don't use too many layers. This is just an actual real mirror shine over the flex points. So, I'm gonna take the shoe tree out. Okay, just imagine you're putting the shoe on and then you're gonna take a step. Actually, let's just say you're taking a step, right? Going down some stairs. Okay, let me just zoom in so you can actually see it. And you'll get cracking right here. So it's lighter colored. I, even though I use burgundy, the burgundy wax is cracking and it looks like it's flaking right here over the flex points. So that's why I don't recommend doing a mirror shine on this area. The toe looks fine. You can just wear the toe and wear it all day. It's gonna be just fine unless you hit it against a wall or a table or something. But this area is gonna look um, a little unsightly. Of course, I mean, if you don't really mind, that shouldn't be a problem. We put the shoe tree back in. Okay, actually see it's flaking off right there a little bit. Yeah. You know what, let's... Let me show you how you can fix it if this actually happens. <clears throat> I have the heat gun right here. You're just gonna add heat. Okay, getting warmer, 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 hot, hot. All right, just gonna get some heat. I'm just gonna. And 
melt that wax right back down. Okay. Where's that darn brush? Here we go. Just give it uh, 20 seconds to cool down. The wax gets really hot, but it cools down almost instantly. So just give it a, a, couple, of, a couple of seconds to dry. Okay, just gonna brush. Back and forth, back and forth. Back and forth. Okay. And that's kind of how you want it to look. Still shiny, not as shiny as before, but you won't get that uh, wax cracking, okay? Toe, of course, looks just fine. You can always mirror shine the toe, mirror shine these hard areas that won't crack, but along the flex points, it's a no-go. And that's why I don't recommend you mirror shine a shoe completely. And that's why I usually just do the toes. Yeah, let's uh, flex the shoe. You're walking all day. Walk, 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 walk. See? No more white cracking. And if you come home at the end of the day and there's... I mean, you get some cracking up here, which is completely normal. Again, use the heat gun. Melt it down quickly, not too much. There we go. And it's looking a lot better. Always use a shoe tree, obviously. Just so that everything looks a lot better. So, there you go. All right, here's the quick side-by-side -side before and after. This is literally why I don't mirror shine the entire shoe and just the toe caps. Looks a lot better. Now, I actually have a pair of Allen Edmonds Kenilworths here. I've already kind of started doing the mirror shine, but I'm gonna finish it off and uh, show you just how far you can go back. I already see some flex points around here, so I'm gonna try to avoid that area and focus more on the toe and the sides and maybe the back heel right here, but that's just my method. If you wanna go ahead and do a mirror shine over the whole shoe and then just deal with the cracks, I guess you can do that, but I just don't think it's a good idea myself. So let's get started on the shine and I will see how it turns out. Okay, we're all done. I focused on the toe area like I said I would. And as you've noticed, I didn't mirror shine areas where there's gonna be flex points, okay? Now, on those areas, you can just use, like I mentioned, layers of wax, and then you can brush it, or you can add a soft shine using two or three layers. And what you do is you use a technique called feathering, where you use quick motions back and forth using very, very light pressure almost like it's a feather and you go back and forth over that area and it really produces a nice shine but it doesn't produce a mirror shine that's going to crack okay so that's really a technique that you can use to go from hard wax where it's a mirror shine and gradually feather it backward so that you don't get any cracking hopefully this tutorial has been helpful and i can lay it to rest and now that i finally answered the the most common question i get Thanks for watching this video. If you need anything from Saphir, visit theeleganoxford.com. We're running a winter sale, so go on over and check it out. We're actually offering daily bundles and deep discounts for uh, grouped and bundled items for you. So head on over. Thanks for watching the video, and I will see you next time.